Ever stuck a magnet to your fridge and wondered, how is this little thing so powerful? Or maybe you've heard about trains that float using magnets? Yep, magnets aren't just fridge toys. They're behind some of the coolest tech on Earth. But have you ever seen how they're actually made? From melting metal at 3,000 degrees to zapping it with electricity, the process is wild. Stick around, because what's coming is hotter, louder, and way more magnetic than you think. Step 1. What are magnets, really? Magnets are everywhere, from your fridge door to electric motors and even MRI machines in hospitals. At first glance, they seem like just fun tools to stick things together or push stuff around. But behind the scenes, magnets are powerful and essential for many technologies we use every day. The coolest part? Every single object in the world has some form of magnetic force, but in most cases, it's just too weak to notice. What makes magnets special is that they have strong magnetic forces. Some materials like iron, nickel, or cobalt can become magnets when treated the right way. And there are two main types of magnets. Permanent magnets, which keep their magnetic force without needing electricity, and electromagnets, which only work when electric current flows through them. In factories, most magnets being made are permanent ones. These are the types we'll be focusing on in this video. Step 2. Choosing the right materials. Before anything is melted or shaped, the process starts with choosing the right mix of raw materials. For a common type of magnet called El Nico, the main ingredients are aluminum, nickel, and cobalt, hence the name. Sometimes other elements like iron, titanium, and copper are added too. These combinations help give the final magnet better strength, stability, and resistance to temperature changes. Step 3. Making the mold. The next step is to create the mold that gives the magnet its shape. Believe it or not, this is usually done using sand. Yes, actual sand. Sand molds are perfect because they're cheap, easy to work with, and can handle the extreme heat of molten metal. The factory starts by packing sand around a pattern of the magnet shape. This is done using a machine that fills up the pattern completely with sand. Once the pattern is packed, it's removed, leaving behind a hollow cavity in the shape of the magnet. Then the mold is hardened by pumping in special gases that solidify the sand in just a few seconds. What you're left with is a rock-solid sand mold that's ready to hold extremely hot, melted metal. Step 4. Melting the metals. Now things start to heat up, literally. The selected metals like aluminum, cobalt, iron, and nickel are placed into an induction furnace. This is a special type of furnace that uses magnetic fields to heat the metals quickly and evenly. Temperatures inside these furnaces reach around 1600 to 1700 degrees Celsius, which is hot enough to melt the metals into a glowing liquid mixture. The goal here is to melt everything thoroughly so the metals blend into one smooth, uniform alloy. If the mixture isn't even, the magnet won't have consistent strength or quality. Once the metals are completely melted and mixed, it's time to pour the liquid metal into the prepared sand molds. The moment the molten metal touches the sand, it can sometimes cause small flames due to the gases in the hardened mold. Don't worry, it's normal and under control. Step 5. Cooling and Breaking the Mold after the molten metal is poured into the molds, it needs time to cool and solidify. This stage is crucial because how the metal cools affects the magnet's internal structure, and that structure directly impacts the magnet's future power. The molds are slid to another area of the factory and left to cool for a bit. Once the metal inside is hardened, the sand molds are smashed open, often using heavy tools like sledgehammers. It breaks the mold apart and helps the hot metal pieces cool even faster as air reaches them. At this point, the pieces look like rings or blocks of metal, but they aren't magnets yet. Step 6. Getting ready to magnetize. Now the solid metal pieces are collected using, you guessed it, a magnet. Even though they're not magnetized yet, they're still made of metal and can be picked up easily. But to actually turn them into magnets, there's still more work to do. The next big step is something called heat treatment, which helps line up the internal structure of the metal for maximum magnetic power. The metal shapes, often rings, are threaded onto a copper pipe and then packed into a larger steel tube filled with silica sand. 
The sand keeps everything steady during the heating process. The ends of the tube are sealed with concrete, leaving just a bit of the copper pipe sticking out. Then the whole tube is placed into a different furnace, where it's heated until red hot again. This step prepares the metal's internal magnetic domains for final magnetization. Step 7. Light Magnetization in a Coil Once the pieces are heated, they're placed inside an electromagnetic coil. This is like a giant copper donut that creates a strong magnetic field when electricity flows through it. The purpose here is to give the pieces a mild magnetic alignment. This doesn't fully magnetize them yet but it does help point all their internal magnetic domains in the same direction. Step 8. Machining and Final Shaping Before fully charging up the magnets, there's often some final touch-up work needed. The rough metal shapes might be too big or not perfectly shaped, so they go through machining and grinding. This helps smooth out any imperfections and ensures they meet exact size requirements for whatever they'll be used in whether it's a speaker, a motor, or a medical device. Step 9. Full Magnetization Now for the moment of truth, the real magnetization process. This is where the pieces actually become full-strength magnets. Each piece is placed between the poles of a powerful electromagnet. A strong electric current is sent through, creating a very intense magnetic field. This field locks the internal magnetic domains into place, giving the piece permanent magnetic power. Step 10. Testing and Quality Control After all that hard work, every single magnet goes through quality control. This means checking the shape, size, and most importantly, the magnetic power. Some magnets are tested to see how much force they can exert, while others are visually inspected or measured with special tools. If a magnet doesn't meet the standards, it might be recycled or remade. Only the best magnets make it to the final packaging stage. And that's important because these magnets might end up in critical places, like airplane instruments, electric vehicles, or even space equipment. So accuracy and quality matter more than ever. Magnets might seem simple, but they're a huge part of cutting-edge technology. In some countries, scientists are using extremely powerful magnets to build magnetic levitation or maglev trains. These trains float above the tracks using magnetic force. No wheels, no touching, just fast, silent, frictionless travel. Some maglev trains can go over 310 miles per hour. And that's just the beginning. Researchers are constantly working on making magnets even stronger and more efficient. From clean energy, to medical science, to future space travel, magnets are a quiet force driving some of the most exciting innovations in the world today.